Hello and welcome to another car review in Gran Turismo 7 and for this particular review we're actually going to be talking about a car which I featured some gameplay footage of already but now of course it's time to actually talk about if the car is worth buying. Currently at least it's not in the legendary dealer anymore but just like the used dealership that of course will rotate over time and give us an opportunity to doubtless buy it again maybe for a different price. The vehicle in question is the 1969 Di Tommaso Mangusta Mangusta, of course, being the Italian name for a mongoose, a creature which can kill snakes, including cobras. You do the math there. But in the game, I'm not so sure about the killing cobras part, because this is already known by those who have purchased the vehicle and tried it out already for being, let's just say, a little bit challenging to drive, at least in its stock form. Now, as you can see in the video here, I'm using this particular car with the standard comfort tyres which it comes with, but I will definitely say it takes more than a little bit of fettling to really get this car right. As with any challenging vehicle though, classic or otherwise, the next obvious question is, is the Mangusta worth getting right or is it just more of a collector's piece that's challenging and not really worth the effort that you put into it. Well, that's what we're here to answer, and also, of course, by extension, if it's even worth buying the car when you get the chance. Now, when I purchased it, and doubtless the same for many of you, it was 245,000 credits from the legendary dealer. So as far as those legendary cars go, or even just used cars in general, it wasn't that expensive. In fact, it undercuts a lot of, you know, classic Ferraris and Lambos and that kind of stuff. That's not necessarily surprising. It's not as renowned uh, or, you know, as prestigious of a brand as Ferrari, etc. But still, it has a lot of prestige in its own way. And it has the interesting approach of combining, in the majority of their models, more of an American approach when it comes to the engine and an Italian approach for style which I personally love. It reminds me of stuff like the Iso Grufo, of course nowadays Pagani with German engines and Italian style. I love it when countries come together to combine their strengths. The main issue with the Mangusta though is the cornering in particular. Now in a straight line it's reasonably quick. The PP level for this one is only 476 points to begin with anyway, so it's not crazy high. It has 300 horsepower, which is also fairly modest. It's not all that heavy, which isn't too surprising for a classic performance car, 1185 kilos. And it is, of course, mid-engine, of course, naturally aspirated. And interestingly, it has those unique split windows at the back, which is because it actually has a gullwing engine bay, which opens both the luggage compartment and the engine itself. So quite a distinctive design. And overall, I think for me, and I might be the only person who thinks this, but the overall appearance of the Mangusta kind of reminds me of if you took one of my favourite classic cars of all time, the Lamborghini Espada, which we are supposed to be getting in Gran Turismo at some point, and kind of squash the Espada down into the shape of something more like a Maserati Bora or a Mirac. That's kind of what this reminds me of overall. Now, in terms of that handling, to get back to that for a second, put very simply, the approach which I would say you need to have if you're going to try and drive this thing completely stock is you should imagine the Mangusta as being a speedboat. Now a lot of classics are kind of wallowy, a little bit soft, a little bit unresponsive or just vague in their steering and braking. And this is, you know, no exception. It still has that kind of approach to it, those kind of downsides. So as such, you really need to treat it like a boat. Imagine if you were driving a boat in a game, you need to essentially line the vehicle up to whatever direction you want it to head in, and then essentially floor it at that point. Or in particular when it comes to the car, rather than a boat, roll onto that throttle progressively rather than really opening it up. This car is all about being smooth and controlled in your motion, so don't slam on the brakes, don't slam on the throttle, and certainly don't throw this thing into corners because it's going to react badly. It's going to wallow into the corner, the brakes are going to upset its stability, and you're going to end up counter steering and flicking straight off the track or just not braking in time, etc. So you need to brake a little bit earlier than you think, turn smoothly and slowly, and in effect drive the car in a way that actually feels like you're kind of wasting time. See, in this video for example I'm driving a totally stock one, and it felt like I was driving it pretty slow. And, of course, I'm not the fastest of drivers anyway, but even so, I ended up having a better lap than if I tried to throw this thing around like it was a modern car. Now, with that in mind, is it worth buying at all? 
well the straight line performance is limited. As you can see here, stock at least, it struggles to even reach 150 despite its power. The acceleration is good enough for its point level, and the handling and braking certainly aren't going to be leading the pack against modern cars. So I will definitely say that the Mangusta is, in my opinion at least, not an essential purchase. It does, however, have a lot of potential, and one of the great things about a more challenging car, not necessarily just a classic, but a classic in this case, is you will often see a significant improvement if you do choose to focus in on really bringing that car under control. So for example, I will probably do a circuit tune for the Mangusta on the channel, maybe even in the next few days, to see what kind of difference we can get just by tuning the suspension and the diff. I reckon I'll be able to get quite a lot better lap time out of it just by doing those two things, even without touching the brakes and the tyres, etc. Because with a classic, sports or otherwise, you will see those kind of drastic improvements, whereas with a modern car, they're already much better. The standard of production, the standard of parts, the kind of honing in that manufacturers do before release, you know, time has just moved on, so they feel better now. Ultimately, it's not an essential purchase as far as I'm concerned. It is, however, a newcomer to Gran Turismo, and I think a pretty cool one. It's certainly not an obvious choice of car to bring to the game, but I'm glad that they did. It's an interesting, quirky, great sounding, and in my opinion, pretty damn good looking collector's car, which you could use, especially for lower level events. I would recommend potentially keeping the car in that lower level though. If you start taking this thing really up high in terms of points, you might start to struggle due to its natural chassis and just overall vibe limitation to its steering and handling and personality. You might, in other words, make it even more unstable rather than actually quicker and better to use. So ultimately, that's it for my thoughts on the Mangusta. Certainly an interesting addition to the game. And of course, give me your thoughts down below either way. Do you love the car? Do you hate it? Are you somewhere in between? And of course, stick around on the channel for when I do a tune for it and for other car reviews in the game in general. And of course, if you want to check out the other reviews which I've already done, they are in the playlist right here on the screen. But until next time, I'll see you then. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.